hello uh, my name is kumar varun and welcome to another episode of random musings my guest today is uh, one of india's finest comedians and most importantly uh, my comedy partner uh, rahul surugane hi varun hi rahul. hi 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 rahul hi. firstly congratulations on this new series that you're doing i hope it does uh, better than even you imagined and i can't wait for people to see it so i already know how awesome this is going to be congratulations and all the best buddy thank you rahul thank you thank you thank you uh, let's state uh, let's uh, let's head straight into our conversation today okay uh, one thing which i like you're the only stand up comedian to be honest who all videos i have seen for obvious reason because we review it together because it goes on our channel i've seen all your videos i've seen your special kal mai udega which is on amazon prime uh, i've also seen your content which is yet to go out in public uh, the one recurring theme that i've notice in all your videos and all the content that you do on stage is that you always say that your comedy does not have any message okay mm. it's a it's a comedy without message and it's a topic that i really want to explore with you because in the history of art form not just comedy there is always a a feeling amongst many people that art should have some message okay uh, every artist who paints or makes a movie or makes a play or does comedy should have some sort of a message about it okay but of course there is also a school of thought that does not agree with this uh, i've read lot of directors talk about things like hey it's a movie and it is supposed to entertain and and not necessarily give a social message or raise an issue etc 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 so my first uh, question to you would be your thoughts on comedy or art in general with message without message should comedy have a message or is it just okay to go out there and make people laugh should comedy have a message no can comedy have a message yes so what i'm trying to say is that i i'm not i don't think people who do comedy with message say like which is intertwined with uh, activism or like putting across their point for the greater good i think it's absolutely fine as long as that's what you want to do the comedy is a very honest art form like any any art is there's like art is amazing when it's honest Okay, the honesty is what brings out the best in art. And when I say honesty, I don't mean facts, because then people will say, "Arey, your jokes don't have facts." You have said no. It, obviously, there's a lot of exaggeration, and there is a lot of things which we say is just for, to make people laugh. Honesty is like coming from a place of what you really feel and how you really feel about things. So I used to get a lot of these messages initially, which used to trouble me, like on Instagram and stuff. Hey, why why don't you do comedy on this topic? you why don't you raise awareness about this topic through your comedy and i used to feel very uh, boxed by that th- comment you know i used to feel very restricted i couldn't understand as to where what is it that was troubling me for a long time but i felt uh, later after pondering upon it i realized that no why i don't like people or external forces controlling what i want to do you know there is there is a reason i love stand up comedy is because uh, uh, not just because i love the art form and i and i i love telling jokes it's also because i never thought this will happen in my life so i was in a corporate job i thought that's my life for the next how many ever years like till i retire and suddenly comedy came out of nowhere and then i just realized the amount of freedom i had to express myself which was nowhere close to what i had in my uh, corporate job because that i didn't vibe with that i'm like this i had so much gratitude to comedy for that and one of the best things about comedy is the freedom to express myself the way i am now when i started reading all these messages and of course these are messages it's not like a mandate or it's no one you know it's just how your brain works when i started reading them i just i started feeling like no why are you taking away this freedom of like my freedom to choose what kind of comedy i want to do right and uh, that's when the thought process like like then what about it? do i have responsibility and uh, social responsibility and this is what i came to my first responsibility is towards my comedy only later then i can be responsible for other things and th- there's no point if i'm not responsible towards it and my responsibility towards my comedy is to be as genuine as possible which means crack jokes which i find funny crack jokes which i like i like telling and uh, that's it so that so that's why the whole thing about the comedy with no message is more like me trying to take pressure off myself also you know 
guys this is this is my comedy this is what i like doing and then so i am telling myself that i don't have the pressure to create a message uh, there are some wonderful comedians across the country and across the world who feel very strongly about issues and not just they feel very strongly about issues they feel the they feel that it is they want to talk about it and they use their art form and i think it's absolute I, i think that's genuine too and that's why comedy works for them also because it's genuine it comes from a place of honesty also i think about when it comes to comedy with message like any other thing it's a choice because it's, it's a choice that an artist can make in terms of what your art form has to convey or not mm-hmm. so i i don't make a lot of political jokes mm-hmm. because politics for me is very personal in the sense i am way more interested in politics today than i was 10 years back but i love discussing politics with people who i am very close to because there is a, it's a emotional discussion okay this is what i want i that doesn't mean i will not do political jokes in future that doesn't mean i will not do jokes which are which might have a message in future mm. the point is whenever i do that i hope it is genuine in the sense at that point of time either i feel about it strongly or it comes naturally to me and anything that i force myself to do will not work because that's what i have done all my life be engineering mba work after that i have taken a route which without like with the least obstruction in my life without so that uh, i have not i have it's not like i've done something because i wanted to i've done what everyone was doing and stuff like that so comedy is very different that way so i want to keep it that way so i might do jokes uh, in future but at this point of time i don't i don't feel strongly about it. when i started doing stand up what attracted me was look i am telling jokes i'm telling funny stuff silly stuff and i'm making people laugh and that's it that's the message okay my comedy has a message my comedy has a message laugh because it's amazing so that's uh, i would like to rest my case over there yeah <laughs> wow uh wow what i think the the biggest takeaway from that of course is uh, uh, that you're honest about what you're doing and you have you have freedom to do what you want to do uh, which brings me to my next topic which is uh the fact that we are all so privileged in that sense as an art form mm-hmm. that we are allowed to do what we can do compared to most other jobs most of the jobs yeah. that we were part of where most of your work life and whatever you did from waking up to going to sleep in the night was more or less defined by what others wanted out of you mm-hmm. compared to this life where you are at your own and you decide what to speak how much to speak what to do how much right. to do uh, and obviously uh you love doing uh, a, a sub genre so to speak of stand up called crowd work okay uh we we've, we've all seen your crowd work video on on random channel uh and it is quite popular it is uh, i i would believe it's one of the first crowd work videos that came out from the indian comedy circuit and then of course there were other videos as well and uh, what i have observed in my little understanding of comedy is that your crowd work is slightly different than most crowd work because uh okay let me take a step back and tell you where i'm coming from okay when i started watching comedy uh live comedy good old days of mm-hmm. canvas club club in mumbai one of the things that every audience member had and they still do is that don't sit in the front row because the comedian will talk to you and will make fun of you or will insult yeah. you okay some people enjoy that because they keep the limelight some people uh, uh are scared and they don't want to sit in the front row many stand up videos i have seen from all over the world and india is where people talk and they make fun of uh, of a couple or of an old guy of a young guy which is funny because it's comedy but i have seen in your uh, crowd work it's mostly conversation so what i wanted to understand from you is what does crowd work mean for you or how would you explain crowd work comedy to someone who does not understand for example comedy at all and what is your approach towards crowd work the essence of crowd work is that uh, the comedy is created by you interacting with the audience who love you in most cases who have come here to enjoy either love you or love comedy or love both and you both are creating something together about which you both have no idea and that's the beauty of the beauty of crowd work and that's why crowd work comedy like when you watch crowd work comedy you are way more uh, 
liberal when it comes to the kind of jokes that you laugh at because it comes with a context that it's been created on the spot it's you know it's been created on the spot with the help of an audience member right so that it's a, it is co creation of comedy which i think is beautiful uh, because otherwise stand up comedy is more like a one way dialogue it's a one way dialogue i am on stage i'm telling jokes that i've prepared the audience is listening as an as a silent audience member they don't participate so they are way more relaxed in that sense they don't have the pressure right which means that uh, they that's what they've signed up for and they enjoy so it's like everyone knows what's going to happen there is no surprises the only surprises in the form of jokes that i crack which they have not heard but in terms of involvement that's it but when it comes to crowd work comedy they are part of it now it's exciting for some people it's not exciting it, for some people right i like any other thing so this is basically aimed at people who are who have fun doing that who have fun being the part being part of the process so i just wanted that uh, just want to ask you that even within crowd work there are different types of crowd work comedy so to hmm. speak like there is one where you know where i'm going with this so yeah. is there a particular type of crowd work that you enjoy a particular type of crowd work that you represent or there's no nothing everything is the same so basically there is no harm in doing any type of crowd work the idea is that your audience already comes they know what to expect so the audience is already they have already signed up for it so i will if i am going for a jimmy car crowd work special i know there's going to be a lot of insults and it's going to be hilarious and that's what i am i've signed up for and there is a consent between us that hey you i am okay with the kind of comedy you do and it's like you okay this is what you're going to get uh, this is what you signed up for so uh, that's not me in person so if i am the mo- the moment i try that unless i do it ironically which can be super funny thinking about it but it can't be my natural response so my stand up uh, my crowd work will obviously mirror my personality the kind of person i am so i don't think so i'm doing anything different in fact i think it's i'm doing what every person who does crowd work does is to try to bring out their own self which is unfortunately not a choice in crowd work like it doesn't stand up because you prepare in crowd work you tend to be yourself because when put under pressure the best response the 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 responses that you give will be the ones which is closest to you because that's your mind will go go to that right it is it is what it will access so i have few rules one is that i will uh, not offend or insult anyone uh, that's my first rule so i keep trying so the moment i have something really funny to say and i feel oh my god this might just make them feel bad i hold myself back it's a spontaneous thing i will not make fun of accents i as much unless it's a it's a slip of tongue or something which then it becomes funny you right so i'll not make a fun of uh, someone's accent in the sense that someone's english actually because a lot of my, my stand up is also english so i will not make fun of pronunciations and stuff like that mm. uh, again there is a punching up funda over there so if a, if an american comes and speak something then it's okay for me to make fun of it you know you know what i mean right so that is something third thing and which is the most important thing uh, which i try is like once i finish talking to someone i want to be sure that that person is laughing and had a good time like it's very important for me that once that conversation is over so at any point of time during the conversation if i felt like there are things that i've said like he felt a little embarrassed or she felt a little embarrassed i try to ensure that by the time we end it uh, that person is in a happy place that person feels like you know what i'm part of it so that's one one very big thing for me very important thing for me sometimes i do it at the end of a conversation or during a conversation or sometimes i do it at the end of the show but my aim is to ensure that every person because the person i speak to is the one giving me content he or she is the main actor or like he is the main person in the in the crowd work show and because of that person so many people are laughing so it's i feel it's a little unfair if that person goes back a little unhappy or disappointed again so these are all rules of course mm-hmm. it's one thing to have them and it's one thing to execute them perfectly mm-hmm. yeah so mike to answer your question in short my crowd work is a representation of who i am as a person mm-hmm. which is also not a perfect person hence i need to have rules to ensure that uh, my i like i bring out myself in crowd work but also ensure that i don't say something which i would regret later mm-hmm. yeah uh rahul if uh, i mean listening to you talk about comedy without a message and crowd work 
and listen to you otherwise as well the one common thread that i find uh, is the fact that you're doing which is uh, like you said it's a true representation of who you are so you're basically bringing yourself to stage and you're not necessarily trying to buckle under what the audience expect from you or what your peers expect from you or what anyone mm. else expect from you which uh, quite obviously and i can't help but talk about it uh, brings me uh, to your career before uh, you started stand up because obviously there is a huge difference between that life and this life and one question uh, that i would ask most guests here is is where i necessarily as a host of the show also become the audience and sort of see like what are the kind of messages that we get very often and one of the messages uh, that you and me and most of the comedians who had a corporate job and who transitioned to comedy uh, always get from from you know audiences comprising majorly of people who are still working in office and they want to do something else not necessarily comedy they might just want to become a musician or a writer or anything uh, so my next question is on this topic of of something that people call following passion okay mm-hmm. uh, which is a very oft used word but we understand that it's not that easy there are many 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 levels of how uh, uh, of what following passion means and also earning money out of it and like earning a steady income and fulfilling your family responsibilities etc are all, are also huge factors in what you decide in life uh the reason i'm asking you now is that it's been around 5 years since you quit your corporate job and you did work for more than 5 years you worked i mean you you worked in an agency after you finished your engineering and then you worked for a, a, an indian mnc where you worked for different different departments different cities so you had considerable corporate experience before you decided to quit i'm sure when you were quitting your job you had some plans or or maybe no plans but th- there was some sort of a vision for future uh so when you look back uh to that vision of the goals that you might have set and when you look at yourself today uh how do you feel and also uh this whole thing about following passion quitting job yeah what would you what would you say to to someone who wants to know these things who keeps asking these things from you me and other people yeah hmm this is a this is a very difficult one because uh, and i'll tell you why the answering this question especially the second part is difficult is because varun we have done something in our life right and this goes to anyone that person has done something in their life that is not the only way to do those things definitely not in fact there are million ways to do the same thing right and whether that thing works for you or not it depends on so many things it depends on the kind of person you are the kind of circumstances that you are in and what your priorities are you know there are like these three things which define so for the moment anyone like the moment i say i give advice or suggestion to someone on the basis of my set of circumstances my priorities and you know uh, like what i have gone through it it is not right because a lot of people might not have the same thing and they will be like are this doesn't work for me how can you say that ठीक है सो आई विल जस्ट टॉक अबाउट व्हाट आई डिड ठीक है एंड माय एडवाइस टू एनीवन हु आस्क्स मी इज फिगर आउट योर ओन वे दैट्स द ओनली दैट्स द ओनली सजेशन फिगर आउट योर ओन वे देयर इज नो राइट और रॉन्ग इट्स ऑल एन एक्सपीरियंस एंड योर एक्सपीरियंस इज व्हाट विल मेक यू व्हाट योर एक्सपीरियंस इज व्हाट विल मेक यू टेक बेटर डिसीजंस इन फ्यूचर राइट एंड दैट्स व्हाट यू हैव टू डू as far as i am concerned also like we are, we are comedians right now but are we successful comedians it's such a it's such a throw away term no no are you did a corporate job now look at you are you a successful comedian what success tomorrow everything can start so like tomorrow and i'm i'm not even talking about things like pandemic and stuff like that a comedian's shelf life is as long as people find them funny it can just go away tomorrow and mm. i myself have don't feel funny all the time mm. not on not on all days there are times on stage i don't find funny i uh, find myself funny and we know these are phases there are phases when you find you know when you come with really funny stuff and you don't it can all go away at any point of time right art is such a field so what is success again success are you successful or not is a always a personal question how i started doing stand up when i quit what were the questions in my mind so now this is completely my journey 
it is again a disclaimer it's got it's not the right way to do thing or it's not the only way to do thing it's the way i did it for whatever reasons so when i quit so i was already doing stand up for two years along with my job and it started off as well so anyways let's not go i've talked about that a lot but when i quit i had a few things in mind so i quit six months later than what i wanted to so i had this in my mind for a long time i should quit i should quit i should quit and the reason the main reason was that i was not enjoying my work at all i was feeling very out of place there and the reason i was feeling very out of place was i was also doing something else mm. after my work which i was feeling so much connected to mm. it just felt like i am stuck in the wrong marriage it just felt like that that was the only reason there was no thought about finances career success and all that so this is why i wanted to quit for a long time because i was fe- feeling very uncomfortable so i had this in my i should quit i should quit now this is not enough for me to quit because then the other other aspects come okay what if i quit paise ka se aayenge itna acha job hai mm. mba ka job hai it's paying very well you know mba job i we are very yeah. decently paid and the ca- career is secure for a long time even as a moderate performer it's secure you know you don't have to be an extraordinary it's it's pretty secure mm. so how to leave all that enter into something which has you have no idea if it has future or not you have no idea whether you have future or not so this is what stopped me for over 6 months so it was very, too much discomfort every day i used to go to office and i used to feel like kya kar raha hu main you know there's this and then which also resulted me in being not fair to the company that i was working for mm. so i made a rule again so i always i think there are certain mental rules i make my rule was the moment i start earning 60% of what i earn from my job from stand up comedy so 60% of my uh, corporate salary if it comes from stand up i will quit my mental calculation was 60% of my current salary is enough for me if i have a job which i love then it's the best thing okay mm. and that was success for me that was my measure of success like if i am able to earn 60% of what i'm earning right now and just do comedy that is success that was success for me unfortunately it never came 6 months mm-hmm. i waited i could never earn because i was earning way too much in my corporate <laughs> yeah i was earning a lot and mm-hmm. uh, comedy was not giving me that mm-hmm. and that's when it happened so it reached a breaking point i was like you know what i know i made a 60% rule but i can't i can't sit here any longer like i can't just come to this place any longer i can't sit here i can't i can't look at my colleagues and my boss uh, filled with so much guilt about not contributing as much as i can so that's when i forced myself and i still remember the conversation now i am not a very brave person okay so i have lot of and guilt is a very common uh, one of my favorite things to feel is guilty so it comes very naturally to me so how do i do it no i know i have to do this but i can't do it i can't just go and give up because like kaise chod rahe job secure hai ha theek hai tarah apna guilt apne paas secure hai so what i did was one day i just decided that i will do it and the way it was like i told my i can't think about it the moment i think about it i will not so i just did this. i did an improv scene basically my it was an improv scene i just i just walk in i'm playing a character who wants to quit that's it so i just walked in without thinking i walked in i sat and before i could think i said boss i am i am i want to resign i i can't do this i have to do stand up i said it and the moment i said it it's out i can't do anything about it i put it i like of oh shit now i can't be like sorry boss i just <laughs> so mistake to wo ho gaya and the moment i said and then you are in character theek okay? hai the moment i said and this is like oh i have are you sure have you thought about it yes i have thought about it ab gaya now i have thought i have said it and i have thought about it now there is no going back so that's how it happened and then i felt i don't know i didn't even think anything i just felt so free the moment i till that time i was dreading how i'll feel once i make that call once i tell it to my boss but the moment i said it i felt very free and i think that's what is most important you have to figure out your life in such a way that you feel free and you feel uh, in a place where you don't feel restricted and you can express yourself freely and if that means for a varun is to be in a corporate job and follow his or her hobby afterwards it's great if for the, if if that is for someone else to just be in the corporate job and enjoy the corporate job it's great because some people love corporate job because they are made for marketing finance so what if, so that works for you so i think you need to figure that out and i'm sure there is no correct way because 
once i quit also i was not earning 60% wo jo target tha that i achieved only uh, i think 6 months after i quit mm. and that point that was success for me that felt like success i was like this is and then later a lot of things happened then special happened and so that didn't that doesn't feel like so because once you move up you have new set of expectations now right so you have to define what is success for you right now i don't feel success or failure i feel happy but if i look back if i look back from the time from that day when i went to karth my boss's cabin and uh, told him that i want to resign if i look back from there i feel i have overachieved not because not because i have so i have done so many shows or videos and brand work and all that i feel i have overachieved because i would have been happy just earning 60% of my salary and doing this for life i am doing better than that i'm just like i'm just happy that that for so many years it has continued i don't know how long it will continue but i have already overachieved so every every passing day of me being in this industry is bonus for me so it depends on your circumstances your priorities and okay. and you know what you are as a person so yeah that's 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 my favorite thing about what you said is um, whenever someone asks for any advice or recommendation in life that's always the way to go like i need to know a lot more about you to give you any advice ranging from simple things like when someone comes to us and says hey recommend me a movie now and you're like hey one second i need to understand what are the kind of movies that you watch and what what is your mood right now what kind of movie do you want to watch hmm. there are so many things for a simple decision like which movie to watch or which book to read uh you know if if a friend of your uh, say comes to bombay or imagine a stranger coming to bombay and says hey rahul i want to eat somewhere recommend Uh, how do you recommend correct because your favorite restaurant can be a pure south indian restaurant and that person is, say is i don't know chinese uh, who who does not en- enjoy indian cuisine or who does not mm-hmm. enjoy vegetarian food you need to know a lot of things just to recommend a restaurant yeah. and here we are talking about changing the course of your life and each one of us uh, has different family issues different family responsibilities different financial status different educational background believe it or not for people like you and i who actually touch wood went to grade b schools we always have this in the back of our mind that hey even if this yeah. doesn't work i'm still a graduate from iim tigazabad or mm. from smf delhi or i am andavad whatever so obviously two people cannot be compared so and everyone has to find their own journey but the only good thing is that when someone listens to your journey maybe it inspires them uh, to sort of at least think about it. and see that if this person has done it then why not me uh and of course uh, which brings me to our next topic which is uh, since the moment you were talking about uh, uh, about quitting job etc obviously uh, i have been a part of that journey uh, and one of the first things that connected the two of us was our love for the same football club your full football club mm-hmm. and i'm so thankful that that conversation happened rahul and i've and i've never told you but uh, a lot of times i think that most of our other sports choices are completely opposite i am just so yes. thankful that we our first discussion was about liverpool football club yeah. because you like rafael nadal i like roger federer Pedro. you like barcelona i like madrid okay mm. uh, there are just so many uh, you know different you like messi i like ronaldo thank god we did not talk about any of these and we yeah. talked about liverpool football club which is our common club but i i'm not here to talk about liverpool i'm uh, i've seen in you that you watch a lot of sports you watch football you watch tennis and you don't just watch you also play uh, i mean of course pre pandemic you used to play football regularly you also played football in your b school and in your engineering yeah. college and in your society like uh, uh, in your childhood etc i want to understand from you as to what has been the impact of sports in your life watching playing etc etc because i haven't honestly it's coming uh, it's a very individual question where i have never played sport i have watched a lot of sport i've been a huge mm-hmm. cricketer and football fan but i it has helped me in some ways but i really want to understand from you as to what has been impact of sport in your life overall mm-hmm. so if i have to pick out like I, i i like everyone has probably two or three things which they're really passionate about 
which means it like these are topics that crosses their mind at least once or twice every day right and i think it's very important to have so at least a few things like everyone should have at least few things in their life which they are very passionate about i think that's that gives some purpose to their life right it can't so for me it's it's right now physical comedy it's it's sports not all sports the kind of you know certain sports that i i watch so these are things like if i'm so if you find me not doing anything at at any point of time i'm just sitting there are high chances i would be reading something about football or like some sports or some that's my thing like some people like reading some people like singing music it's but it's very important to have that for me sports has been very integral part of my life since childhood uh, and there are two reasons for that two big reasons one is my dad my dad is a huge sports lover he's also a huge he's also extremely voracious reader yeah. i i didn't pick that part from him my brother picked yeah. that part and i yeah. picked the sports part from i'm a huge huge he was a huge sports fan so i remember ever since childhood i started playing badminton when i was 5 because my dad used to play down and then he used to teach me and then we used to play uh my i remember as far as like the 1994 football world cup again i had no idea about football at that point of time cricket was the only thing that was happening my dad used to have charts prepared you know from a paper, newspaper cutting in which he'll keep updating results and stuff he will you know very meticulously he'll do that like okay first round this guy won this you know this team won against this so he was very passionate about that and looking at that it just came to me tennis i started watching tennis because my dad started watching and he's and my dad used to always explain stuff to me he because he loved sports he like jim courier mm. of course it had a lot of his opinions yeah. also it didn't matter like jim courier is the no one can beat him ivan landon was the person who had no one could but now it's jim courier and it's like he used to like steffi graf steffi graf is amazing so i used to like steffi graf you know things like that so i've started watching sports from a very from a very young age and lot of kind of so my dad would watch dd mein kuch bhi he would watch any judo judo fighting se leke i i'm not even kidding he'll just watch he just loved watching sports he would watch judo ice skating uh, and he watch a lot of stuff and he had this thing about whenever he watches a sport he has to understand it quickly as to what mm. so that came into me from very very young age second thing where i grew up i grew up in chembur in a in a place called srinagar colony yeah. and uh, i have so much of my uh, creative and sports inclination to that place because it is a it's a now in today's world today's day it is a small colony 13 small buildings and very private and there is a huge ground in between right so there are no pub, it's like an enclosed place there is no you can't hear public transport you can't hear train uh, sorry buses and stuff there is inside the place it's just you guys and uh, we had such a brilliant sports culture like we used to play and the amount of sports that we used to play and play really well in the sense that there were so many kids and so many uh, people in our in our colony who used to play so well in so many sport that used to learn a lot of them and there was a huge culture in chembur of like competitions like oh this colony versus that colony so we'll send our best team and then we support us and stuff and it was a dream to be part of that team so we used to play so there were so many sports i started uh, playing because of that cricket football volleyball badminton there was no tennis but i used to watch a lot of tennis and stuff like that so sports was had become a very important part of my there was no sports in my school my school did not have a ground there was no for sport in my school was running race running race because that's what i used to call it yeah, yeah. like <laughs> things like that potato race and running race sack race those were the things which came under sport there was no yeah. so all my sports knowledge and sports inclination came from that so bachpan se we have been playing and it's like a proper it's like a very kya yeah, bolte hai sasta academy type to agar hum log cricket khelne hai for a long time bachche log jab rehte hai we can't play cricket but we'll have to make the pitch humko hmm. roller ko maarna padega stumps pehle aake rakhna padega ha team score card maintain karna padega because that's what you will do and then you will climb up the ladder when you get better yeah. so there were two pitches once chote log bade log to chote log mein if you do well you get selected these were all organically happening to kal se tu bade log ke sath khelne and to be a big moment yeah. and then we used to support when other teams used to come and play we used to go yeah. so sports i have loved sports always i watch a lot of sports not as much as my dad for sure in terms of variety but i still watch badminton my dad still follows badminton he follows it so he will call me 
you will call me put star sports 2 there is this amazing match between chen hong and lin dan chen hong is the, and he'll give me context also you know yeah, lin dan yeah. was a champion but now chen hong is and this is i think chen hong mini i mean chen hong is oh. number one but lin dan is still playing well the one he'll give context whoever wins gets mm-hmm. this grand prix and whatever whatever mm-hmm. formula one i started watching so so many sport i used to watch mm-hmm. the watching part was with my dad mm-hmm. like all the best moments i'll tell you one moment which i remember mm-hmm. was uh, this one of the days my dad slept early or he must for whatever reason uh, champions league quarter uh, sorry last round match 2005 olympiakos like mm. Mm. whoever wins goes to the knockout stage you can yeah, yeah. so, and liverpool needed one goal three yeah. goals in one half and they are not scored three goals in the whole tournament till that yeah. and ek goal aaya dusra goal and the final goal uh, steven gerrard one of our favorite footballers scored the screamer out of nowhere and i just yelled okay i just yeah. yelled yeah. my brother was sleeping there he's not a yeah. fan he got up and he got so angry like yeah. chill he got angry chill and i couldn't explain to him what this means to him. he got angry he was shouting maybe he, i don't know there was why i don't know what but it was an altercation my dad got up my dad got up and kya hua and my brother like main so raha tha ye chill raha hai like i'm like what is this rot i just said steven gerrard scored like 80th minute and now they can go to the chapter my dad was like okay i think this is completely acceptable this is completely acceptable oh oh absolutely i just uh, that when you said the gerard olympiakos goal it gave me goosebumps now yeah. so and uh, what are the what are the one of the biggest advantage so to speak uh, of having a uh, passion in sports in life and the way it helps you is and i know you and i both do it is whenever we feel uh, i don't know if stress is the right word or nervous is the right word but whenever we feel like some sort of nervousness or some you want to escape everything and you just want to be uplifted you know mm. uh, a mood booster as some people call it you just go on youtube and do things like uh, all steven gerrard goals you know liverpool best goal yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, so I I don't know how I didn't even th- th- talk about it but, because I was not speaking about specific sports persons as yeah, such. Yeah. Was talking about my journey was, yeah. but uh, Sachin Tendulkar was my bachpan, and yeah. for so many I know, and this is something which everyone does. But Sachin Tendulkar was, if I have to describe my childhood with one in one word, then Sachin Tendulkar will be right on top. Like, yeah. like cricket was so important. was such a impo- and like you talked about feeling nerves at the young age of 7 8 i know that i used to feel nervous yeah how how will india do when sachin is on 90s will he because you feel for that person and i think that's so important in life to have at least few things apart from what you're doing or yeah. your family and friends and stuff few things which you have to feel for and i think that that is that is very important so for me sports is definitely something i feel a lot for and yeah. and i think it's a beautiful feeling to be nervous you're nervous about something which doesn't affect your life in that sense right there's no direct oh yeah you're like oh there's just 3 minutes left liverpool are one goal in ahead i hope they don't uh, they don't concede a goal and you're nervous for those 3 minutes you can't wait for those 3 minutes to end right i think it's very important to have something in life and uh, for me sports is right up there because it makes yeah. me feel something which i don't otherwise for anything so true so true and that's why a lot of people who don't follow for example things like english premier league or any any foreign based sport for example and one of their arguments always is uh, ki uh, man how are you guys you're from uh, bhandup and chembur and you're supporting teams from manchester and liverpool like kya hai tumhare life mein kya effect pad raha hai but you have to be a a a, a fan to understand uh, the kind of impact it does on your life uh, rahul which brings me to the next topic which uh, uh, in fact first i will uh, I, I i you said something interesting in the middle and i, I want to spend uh, a minute about it when you said your father was a voracious reader and a sport fanatic and you took the sports part and your brother took uh, the reading part although there was no necessary batwara yeah. in the family but it just happened Correct. by default and i've noticed that you never read like you barely read and i yeah. it's one of my personal mission to make you read more uh, and uh, <laughs> I, i i gift you books i try and give you messy yeah. books so you start reading 
आई आई गिव यू हिच आई कर सो आई वाज लाइक कॉमेडी तो पढ़ी लोगे आप बट लाइक लाइक बट देयर इज आई ऑनेस्टली आल्सो बिलीव दैट इट्स कंप्लीटली फाइन इफ यू डोंट रीड बुक इन टुडेस डे एंड एज ओके बिकॉज इन टुडेस डे एंड एज देयर आर मल्टीपल थिंग्स वेयर फ्रॉम वेयर यू कैन एक्चुअली सॉर्ट ऑफ लर्न थिंग्स यू नो वी लिव इन इंटरनेट एरा वेयर यू कैन वॉच थिंग्स यू कैन you can uh, listen to things so it it's not like life mein itna bhi wo stress nahi hai if you don't really read a book but reading is a good habit and that's a different topic altogether but do you want to talk about like why you 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 never really read or you don't enjoy reading or are you planning to read i've heard and i've seen that you have sort of developed a small reading yeah. habit of late so when i started when i was young hmm. i did start reading right because it was a very natural thing i see my brother reading i see my dad reading they used to discuss books and stuff and my my brother my dad used to say this book is aisa ye wo ye wo and give like context and this stuff so i used to pick up so i remember i growing up i i like very much when me tinkle chacha chaudhary i used to love them so every time i'm on a train my they have to buy me one from the, like the latest one i will read that gokulam was a magazine kind of thing which i used to read because rajiv used, my brother used to get it and i used to read it then i started reading hardy boys because my brother started reading and i loved hardy boys now these are like it's so long time i loved reading uh, frank and joe hardy right and i i loved reading about them uh so there was also a time and i remember this around uh, when i was 10 11 something of that sort one of my favorite things to do was finish dinner as soon as possible and then just run to the bedroom with a book like a hardy boys or something read and then fall off sleeping without even knowing while i'm reading like just close the door it's just me and my book so i i loved that a lot i remember this feeling uh harry potter came so i was still reading a lot till this i have read a lot of books in that time i read harry harry potter so i was like like any other kid i was into it like i would stay up the whole night just to finish the books can't wait for the next book go to shop uh, crossword sit So was there. I was never like extremely passionate, but I was like a good, decent reader. And also the whole thing about reading is good and stuff. And as a kid, you want to do the good things. So that also yeah. made me made me do that, right? Yeah. Uh, I think something happened. I don't know what uh, around the time I started uh, like engineering and stuff. I think I found a lot of other interests or like yeah. I, yeah. which. fortunately or unfortunately to precedence and then i think th- things happened and then i found it difficult to read since the time mobile phone started my attention span has become so less that uh, every now and then when i try to get back to reading i find it difficult to stay concentrated find it difficult to go beyond a few pages and then i will give up mm. which is a great thing about the 20s is that you don't feel bad about giving up something now in 30s guilt favorite thing so i felt a lot of guilt in my 30s of like why am i not reading i should read more you know i should i there are so many books i have there are so many books my brother has my dad has i can read more but i have never taken it to reading i will i've started then then this netflix and online shows like pehle torrent karo which no no one should do bachpan mein someone had done it so Uh, and all those things you know prison break wo sab dekhna yeah. and then a new thing started by during my mba i was very interested in all of that so reading like took a back seat and i never realized that it has taken a back seat in my 30s i tried to get back to it but i couldn't concentrate at all now in my mid 30s is when i am going i am trying to get back to reading not because yaar kya maza aayega that is secondary wo bhi hai but it's more like what you said it's it's a good habit so at some level i'm like no i need to i need to read also to even give it a chance whether i love it or not so yeah. and it's now or never type so i have kind of restarted baby steps i don't want to actually let me commit here now so then it'll... so you gave me the book hitchhiker's guide to galaxy and again i know how you choose books you're like so that at least it's easier less pressure for me to start reading yeah. because it's a funny book it's one of the legendary uh, books ever written so i finished that just two days back because i started reading only like a uh, two weeks back and i've noticed how the amount i read has increased mm. the number of pages i read which means i'm enjoying it right i i read more now the biggest problem for me is the moment i start and this is the most things be it 
me trying to meditate be it me trying to be uh, like kya uh, bolte off phone whatever the moment i do it i enjoy it but for me to start is a problem like mm. i love i love when i read i love when i read uh, but i for me to get it into the habit of reading every day or like switching off the tv and reading or keeping my mobile aside it's a little challenge which i'm still working on no. i love the idea of rahul is such someone who reads a lot <laughs> i am not there and uh, i am hoping that if i consciously read for say at least two months hmm. then i would want then it is autopilot then i want to do it rather than i am trying to do something you know what i mean yeah so yeah i'm uh, glad that you talked about uh, reading like everyone who asks me for advice i just give them two advice whenever it comes to reading one is read one page per day that's it but read every day just read one page one page it will take two minutes read and then it's up to that person if it's interesting he will obviously read more more pages or uh, or she would uh, read for half an hour one hour but just read one page daily just read a page and second thing is if you don't like reading start hmm. reading things that you find interesting in other way i'm talking about your other interest area mm-hmm. for example if i give you a book about an exciting match at french open you yeah. will be invested not just because it's a book because you're like oh man this is going in tie breaker oh mm-hmm. a clay mein khel raha hai to aisa hoga yeah this is a different than a uh, hard court yeah. or grass court and and that is why you will read reading and so on and so forth yeah right well, yeah i have to say that, like one of the my best phases of reading was when i went through a breakup before i joined mba okay and there was like at that point of time i used to read because your interest in anything is so low like there is no distraction in that sense so i i started reading and i'll tell you what all i read at that point of time. it's like unbe- i i read uh, i fountain head from ayn rand which i connected so much and it's a difficult book to read if you have not been reading right also very not a, yeah yeah it's a thick book it's an intense book right you can't just start like the howard rock the character itself yeah. is very so i started i read that i read the secret and i watched the secret because i was like fine so i read a couple of i read jonathan livingston seagull i was like reading that i read the alchemist so all these books i read at that point of time tuesdays with mori you know all these intense book books i read at that point and then once life became better again i was like because my mind became free to to other things chalna hai khelte chalna logo ko milte hain and stuff then it took a back seat so i think uh, the moment i need to be i need to have nothing else going in my head in- interesting for me to pick up reading but yeah. let's see if we do this again varun in a year's time hopefully yeah. by that time yeah. yeah i'll advise people on how to pick up reading for sure for sure but like you said uh, one th- cue that i pick from there is uh, there's also uh, what phase you are in in life because what happens is uh, there is a pattern in all the books that you said you know all those books are very similar all uh-huh. those books uh, oh. you know the secret alchemist uh, uh, fountain head uh, tuesdays with mori are all books which sort of tell you that you can become a better person or maybe you should focus on yourself and post breakup that is a, something that you enjoy reading like nahi yaar nahi i can do better no 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 there is a secret and this girl maybe i'm be- alchemist yeah man i'll follow my passion etc etc so yeah uh-huh. Uh, Raul, you also talked about being in thirties and being in twenties and how life changes. Okay, yeah. uh, being in twenty when we were tw- in our twenties, life was very different. There were many things that we used to find very boring in life. Okay, because the people who are a little elder than us always seem mm. uh, they always seem to be talking about these things. Uh, they would always talk about money and saving and investment, which was very boring. But I one big thing that happens with between like graduating to 30 from 20 is that supposedly boring thing now become your life now you realize mm. oh man this maybe is boring but this is really important okay yeah. and apart from uh, money and investing etc one other thing is health and fitness okay because mm. there was a time when we didn't care about it. we used to drink whatever we wanted to eat whatever we wanted to no exercise nothing 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 but i've seen in you that over the past quite some time uh you have taken health and fitness very very seriously again yeah. this is the topic health and fitness is something that we would never talk about if we were in 20 but yeah, the, yeah. when you start growing old 
you suddenly realize that okay there is limitation to our body we are not the same anymore no matter how much you try we age and aging is a constant truth okay you realize your body does not function the way it used to function earlier when you drink the hangover start becoming different uh, when you do any physical activity uh, you you start getting fatigue easily etc etc and suddenly health becomes so important to what you eat or what you do and yoga has been a very important part in your life you've been practicing yoga very 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 yeah. uh, dedicatedly over the past many months uh, so i just wanted uh, to uh, your opinion on on health fitness mm-hmm. in general because obviously this is a huge topic uh, people talk yeah. about how a healthy mind resides in a healthy body or uh, longevity and especially over the last year or so because the pandemic health has again sort of regained uh, a very important yeah. uh, space in our conversation i wanted your opinion on health fitness yoga especially and how it has helped you as an individual or as an artist so firstly uh, let me correct you that i am not very big into fitness because it will be very it will be inappropriate for me to say that when there are people who are like really really into fitness you know so yeah. let me just define as i am someone in my 30s who has taken more interest in fitness than i had taken say 10 years back like yeah. way more and this is something which i strongly want to continue so mm-hmm. there is a st- strong feeling that i want to continue doing this so that's why so i'm not, i'm definitely not i'm not fitter than most people who are into fitness and stuff like that but like this is comparison with where i was uh, like my outlook towards fitness and like mm-hmm. you said we should never talk about it mm-hmm. so think dominos ka sabse bada pizza kon kha sakte was a genuine competition you wanted yeah. to win now i can't even think of like that cheese burst pizza if i oh my i can't even it's just like i can't yeah. think of even having it yeah. more than yeah. maybe one slice you know yeah. what i mean yeah. so it's a so it's very so fit see insecurity is a life mein bahut sara theek hai to on top of my head my insecurities one is how i look and other is how i how fit i ye do hai how i look mein uh, again it depends on your expectations with yourself i had like for a long time my one insecurity has been my dark circles theek okay? hai and i always it's something which looks much worse in cam on camera than it actually is theek okay? hai so that's why and as a when i put photos on instagram and stuff people used to comment saying sota kyu nahi hai drugs le raha hai ye wo which used to hurt me a lot because i was like nay so i used to feel bad about it theek okay? hai but i also used to the moment i feel bad about it i will also tell myself ki matlab like a third person's perspective it's okay it doesn't people commenting on your look shouldn't bother you so much you know you will rationalize all that uh, and uh, also like i but personally i have taken that seriously i have gone to the dermat like a few years back the dermat was like please sit there and you like there's nothing wrong you have like slightly deeper eyes so it it looks worse in camera plus you have dark circles which is very normal there's nothing like your sleep cycle is because i sleep a lot and stuff i have yeah. all those things like yeah. there's nothing to worry about and uh, it is there matlab kya problem hai to so yeah. which took you know so that is one thing which is like still affects me a little how i look but i'm more or less very happy with how i look and everything yeah. you know second thing is fitness it's a very personal thing uh i remember how much i used to play how much like i could go in i could play from the morning till night just come back for food and just go back and play whatever sport that is how i was i enjoyed and injuries never bothered me just to get injured theek ho jata tha bachpan mein theek hai it all changed like around 5 years back when i was playing football after a long time and after a long time two saal into my job tha and stuff i was not playing and someone started playing in turf i start i went to play i played and then i uh, injured i twisted my ankle theek okay? hai mm. really bad so i felt i couldn't walk stuff like that went to the doctor got myself bandaged and stuff now i know an ankle twist takes a week mm. maximum and you're back to normal ek hafta ho gaya do hafta ho gaya teen hafta ho gaya it's still not all right mm. i'm st- went to the doctor again doctor checked x-ray x-ray kiya bola everything is fine don't worry there is i was like is it a ligament tear so like no it's a ligament tear so me it's normal theek ho jayega ek aur mahina theek nahi hua woh wapas gaya matlab it was getting better but theek nahi hua and i remember what my doctor what doctor said doctor said raul you are not 22 anymore it, 
आई वॉज लाइक बट एक हफ्ते में एक हफ्ते में नहीं यू आर गेटिंग ओल्डर सो हीलिंग विल टेक मोर टाइम इन फैक्ट इट विल कीप ऑन टेकिंग मोर टाइम इन फ्यूचर एंड दैट वॉज सच अ शॉक फॉर मी लाइक इट केम आउट ऑफ नो वेर बिकॉज यू फील ट्वेंटी इज फॉर एवर अंदर से तो तुम बीस ही हो ना तुम है नहीं बीस एंड द फर्स्ट टाइम लाइक आई वॉज लाइक i am yeah. not 20 anymore yeah and that was a big chore for me and there was like what can i do to ensure mm-hmm. that at least you you know it's it doesn't become worse in future so like to, to keep exercising you have to be in the habit of and that's the only thing and still age age does play a role so that so that hit me hard and that's when like mentally i think that something changed i have to do something regarding exercise and fitness I never. I don't want to do gym. I don't want to be muscular and stuff. Mm. I don't want to look good. I'm happy with the way I look. Mm. My looks' ka problem is the uh, dark circle, mm. which also mentally I'm sorted. Mm. But I want to be fit. I don't want to be unfit. So that's when I started. I started running. I mm. say in my uh, in my building I used to run. Start playing football again, doing warm up and stuff like that. ठीक है तो ये चल रहा था काफी टाइम तक, which became a part of me. Then the pandemic happened. Everything stopped and stuff. Then. Uh, mm. I was considering doing yoga for a while because my my flexibility is something which I really am again conscious about. I want to be way more flexible than I am, and I am telling you, Varun, it is it's so amazing. It's not that I'm doing great in yoga. It's not that I can do stuff which I could never do. There are few stuff I can do which the small wins help. But my favorite part about yoga is the moment I finish yoga, the feeling that I have is unexplainable. बिकॉज फॉर वन आवर पूरा दिन फोन में रहते हैं लैपटॉप में रहते हैं कुछ ना कुछ योर माइंड इज नॉट देयर एट ऑल एंड देन सडनली यू फिनिश योर योर माइंड इज काम यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू गो बैक टू योर फोन यू डोंट फील लाइक गोइंग बैक टू योर फोन एट ऑल यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू रीड द वाट्सएप मैसेज यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू सी हुट यू जस्ट वॉन्ट टू फील काम योर बॉडी फील्स ग्रेट बिकॉज योगा इज सो मच अबाउट ब्रीदिंग स्ट्रेचिंग एट इट मेक्स यू फील अमेजिंग सो दैट्स वॉट आई स्टार्ट लविंग अबाउट योगा द योगा डज नॉट demand you to be flexible or demand you to be better than others yoga is just about you getting better at what you are today so the your progress is always from what you were to what you are now which is i think is the best thing so you feel happy like my trainer might look at me and she might feel like i don't know i mean she might just feel yaar ye to itna kuch bada kaam nahi kiya but i will still feel happy about it right mm. she doesn't she's very encouraging that way but this is what she also says like you have it's about it's your journey it's like anything so you have to enjoy your journey and yoga gives you this chota small wins the lottery mm-hmm. like tum ek hafta karo you'll see certain small wins are aaj mera haath yahan tak ja raha tha aaj ek aur win ja raha mm-hmm. so when you see those small wins you know it keeps you extremely motivated and i hope uh, i keep doing it till i'm 50 one day i look like milan soman if i look like milan soman at the age of 50 varun yeah. if we look like milan soman at the age of 50 That oh, is success, not? guys. That is success. <laughs> yeah, wonderful, wonderful that you talked about it because uh, it it's again back to what we said earlier that it's all about habit and seeing those small changes within you. I mean, no mm. matter how much you learn or read about other story, etc., when you start doing it, maybe for three weeks or a month, anything may may it might be yoga or even gym or running or reading anything that gives you or your soul satisfaction. and you start seeing those small changes and small wins like you said it changes everything cool rahul uh, anything ha huh, sorry sir hmm. yeah one more point about this small changes is that hmm. now that again there is a maturity comes i think now when i put up like sometimes i put my yoga photos on my uh, insta story also hmm. and then i'll get a lot of messages some of the messages from probably who do yoga a lot they'll be ah. like no this post posture is not correct you need your back rests to bend a little more and stuff and i'm i know i'm not an expert right and it does that's that's the whole thing right when people say, i'm like no my i am just interested in how i'm improving right if and i know my journey and that's that's all that i require for happiness you know i want to know that i am doing better than what i was it's not a showcase of this is perfection perfectionism you know yeah. and i think that's something which we all need to learn learn to enjoy your own success no yeah. your success is not for others to enjoy right because everyone will have a different definition of success so the moment 
like you have tried to get me into reading a lot i also do i also am very happy when you start doing any exercise i re- yeah. i know that yeah i've come to your place and we have tried to do and i was like chalo bhagte hain let's do some yeah. uh, running and stuff like that so yeah yeah one day one day rahul okay uh, rahul which brings me to uh, the fun part of the show which is uh, rapid fire round there's only one rule you are not allowed to think okay uh, i'm sure when you think there'll be different answer but whatever is on top of your mind you'll say that and then we'll go back mm-hmm. to your answer in case you need to elaborate but not more than one or two lines to every yeah. year, okay cool mm-hmm. bill are you ready yes okay your favorite indian comedy special kanan gills keep it real best thing about random chicken on no pressure worst thing about random, random chicken on no pressure <laughs> best day of your life my birthday uh, last year 2020 lowest point of your life when i went through a breakup one thing you regret as a comedian of not being more uh, adventurous and uh, or yeah not being more adventurous one thing you are proud of as a comedian I am living life as per my terms. Best thing about being a Tamilian? The food. Favorite TV show of all time? Office. One video of yours you will always recommend? Uh, yeah, crowd work special one. Not special, nice. one your one. Done. Wow. Very Done already. No controversial question. Nothing. Very simple. I'll quickly go back to your answer in case you want to add mm. one or two lines to anything. According yeah. to you, your favorite Indian comedy special is Kanan Gill's "Keep It Real" on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Best thing and worst thing, both about random chicken with no pressure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because uh, I think uh, the best thing is no pressure because we it again it like it all comes back to the whole thing of you having freedom, mm. and there is nothing. Not nothing better than freedom. There's no better feeling than having freedom. Uh, the worst thing that's why there's no pressure. We don't pressurize each other to do stuff. We don't pressurize each other. हम कुछ तो करते हैं channel में और और Instagram में ये we have such a we have a policy of like मन कर रहे तो करेंगे नहीं कर रहे तो नहीं करेंगे which is like top level top priority yeah. like that's the superseding uh, rule. Over everything else. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, करते हैं. Yeah, लेकिन आज मेरा मन नहीं है. Will is a very legit reason saying. ठीक है. Yeah. Yeah. So which is that? Yeah. The so, yeah. because of that we don't put any pressure. We also I'm mm. I'm saying don't create more awesome mm. content mm. or do stuff that we would love to do because mm. we are a little lazy. Yeah. Got it. Got it. You said best day of your life was birthday in 2020. Yeah. So it's, I don't think so. That's the best day of my life. But that's no, no, the but first yeah. thing that came. because uh, that was the last birthday i was uh, this uh, the best, what i loved about it as i was not very excited about it because it was a birthday in lockdown and every day we were doing all the work like you know jhadu jhadu se lekar bartan lekar kapda karke and then cooking karke lot of things which i have not done in life before so like cooking and all i have never done so do all of that and uh, every day was lot of work on my birthday i was told i my birthday gift is i don't have to do any work and i just remember that i never felt that a lockdown birthday can feel special but just the fact that i was i was not expected to do any work i felt so happy that day it just i felt pampered and i felt like uh, royalty at that point of time so i loved so i remember enjoying that birthday a lot i was like nahi khatam ho nahi khatam ho right and i just didn't want that day to end yeah this is the lowest point of your life was your breakup उसपे which is also great because i just feel i started feeling again no it's a good thing in the sense that 
to feel when you actually especially when you come out of it you move on you think mm-hmm. back about it you're like wow yeah i used to mm-hmm. feel things yeah is it felt nice so i think it's a good thing it should happen to everyone it's a life lesson but yeah that was my low i remember being extremely low like i can go back to that feeling that's how strong it was i can think wow. and i can go back mm. one thing you regret as a comedian is you not being adventurous enough yeah so it's kind of linked to our no pressure thing i think the policy is not to create stuff or not to make jokes force yourself to do do what you like you know mm. uh which also means i am not like if you look at bo burnham ka special right now you will be like damn ye this guy alag hai na like kya talent hai kya wo sab to hai talent hai funny hai everything but look at the amount of risk he has taken like how adventurous he is i am not very risky because at some level the moment i start doing that i will lose out on a bit of Mm. no pressure and stuff like so that i think so but i regret i feel that i should be more adventurous mm. should mm. try new stuff and mm. yeah which i am not at this point one thing you are proud of as a comedian is uh, living on your own terms which we discussed earlier as well today best thing about being a tamilian is the food uh, i don't think yeah. there's any doubt about it it's one of my yeah. favorite cuisines as well one of uh, your favorite tv show of all time is the office which uh, is something that <laughs> so i was i was telling i was telling the office and i was thinking friends and i was like yaar ye kaisa hai you know and it is then although yeah. i don't like watching funny stuff but these are two fun, yeah. funny yeah. programs i really love these are the two yeah. yeah 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 maybe that's a conversation for a different day because both you and i don't really enjoy watching sitcoms anymore uh, yeah we would rather watch a fada or a viking mm-hmm. Then oh yes watch, <laughs> then watch uh, also uh, any, off any late i've seen so many new shows now varun mm. off late mm. that ki mujhe ek bhi show ka naam nahi yaad raha tha i was like ab kya dikh raha tha to broad church yaad nahi aa raha tha but oh, face yaad aa raha tha jagah yaad aa raha tha and stuff like that oh, yes, yes. one video of yours which you will always recommend and recommend to everyone is the crowd work video yeah. which we also sort of talked about today right Yeah. Wow, uh, that's it. It was great, Rahul. There's no hamper or anything for your rapid fire, but there are no controversial question also in rapid fire. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you so much for being a part of this show. Thank you so much. Okay. Anyone who is listening to this on an audio platform, you can also listen to this and watch it on Random Chikibam on YouTube. Please do subscribe to Random Chikibam, uh, and uh, please watch uh, Rahul Purmanian special. Kal me udega on Amazon Prime. If you're one of those very few people who haven't seen this yet. and uh, please like share subscribe and share it with your friend thank you we'll see you again